one day in the lives of three women from three different times and places brought together on stage through the magic of opera. The Hours is a new work opening tonight on one of the world's biggest stages, the Metropolitan Opera in New York. Jeffrey Brown reports for our Arts and Culture series, Canvas. The real-life English writer Virginia Woolf in 1923 in a suburb of London. Sung by Joyce Di Donato, she fights the demons in her head as she struggles with an idea for a novel. Laura Brown, sung by Kelly O'Hara, a fictional housewife in 1949 Los Angeles, barely surviving a sense of meaninglessness to her life. and Clarissa Ward in New York City at the end of the 20th century. On a day her dear friend, dying of AIDS, will take his life and she will contemplate the course of her own. Sung by soprano Renee Fleming. You've got an incredibly interesting story about three women from different periods and their complicated lives, um, their sexuality, their um, there's, it's, there's suicide, there's mental health, there's uh, you know pretty much everything in it. And opera can do this without any problem, kind of taking three different periods and putting them together because it's the music that connects everything. The music is by 50-year-old Kevin Putz, and days before opening, he was intently watching and listening at a rehearsal. This is his fourth opera. The first, Silent Night, won the 2012 Pulitzer Prize. In the hours, he's worked with librettist Greg Pierce to adapt the 1998 novel by Michael Cunningham, also a Pulitzer winner, which was made into a star-studded film four years later by director Stephen Daldry, and which itself was inspired by Virginia Woolf's classic 1925 novel, Mrs. Dalloway. For lovers of different art forms, novels, films, operas, it offers a way into thinking about what each can do. With opera, two characters from different times can share the stage and sing with almost two one another. For Putz, who's composed everything from solo to orchestral music as well, this taps into his love of large-scale storytelling. It's that I love storytelling in music. I love evoking certain things, emotions, situations, through music. I think that's the kind of most amazing thing that music can do. To first introduce the three stories of the hours and sort of establish different musics for each of those, and then gradually begin to blur the lines between them and, and have them overlap in a way that only music can. Bringing new opera is my passion. Met opera conductor Yannick Nezaseguin says he loves the collaborative aspect of opera, especially when he can work with a living composer. We play so many dead ones. <laughs> we play so many Mozart and so many Verdi operas and so many Wagner operas. You're not knocking Mozart and Verdi. No, I, I love them, but sometimes, you know, you all, you wish that you were be, would be able to ask them questions. And often I make a joke with the orchestra. I say, one day I'm going to ask Verdi, is it in heaven or in hell? I don't know, but I'm going to ask Verdi what he means, but hopefully not too soon. Now we have Kevin Putz, we have Greg Pierce there here. And we're reminded how the music that's written, especially in opera, is an, a living element. We were to opera as a living art form, and one that can engage contemporary issues. Every time I work on a new piece with a composer, I say, listen, I want to sing words that are relevant to me in my life, that sound like I could be singing them and should be singing them. You, Renee Fleming. Exactly. At this stage of my life, I said I want to sing something that's, that, that means something to me. In the hours, Renee Fleming saw it, a story of women as artists, friends, lovers, mothers. Here, it's the smallest pieces of daily life, buying flowers, for example, that somehow raise the biggest questions about life itself. Underlying all of this, the knowledge that the real Virginia Woolf would take her own life in 1941 at age 59.
every single person who's in this opera has a really interesting role and a tale to tell. And the stories are relevant. We're, we're in a mental health crisis in this country that is, in the world actually, that is um, unprecedented. It's certainly in my lifetime. And I, I, I fear for young people, and especially because it's hitting them so hard. If the audience recognizes themselves on stage, they're going to relate to the story. I believe that this then can um, bring more people to the opera, not just because we want to have more people in our seats, but because we believe in the, the mission of opera, that is to convey those messages and collectively have a cathartic experience that can give us hope. Kevin Putz, who also teaches at the Peabody Institute in Baltimore, says tapping into that mission and the contemporary possibilities for opera is attracting a new generation of composers. The fact that so much new opera is happening in this country, not only at the Metropolitan Opera, but in companies all over the, the country. You know, my students all want to write operas. When I was a student, I had no interest in doing that because I thought, well, who's going to perform it? You know, maybe I'll write an orchestra piece and try to get an orchestra. Even that would be difficult. Yeah. But these days, it's a real possibility. At Opera's End, in a gorgeous trio, Put shows what opera can do. Finally bringing the three women fully together. The hours of one day, three lives. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown at the Metropolitan Opera in New York. All I can say is, wow.